What's up everyone and welcome to Best Car Reviews, I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Ford Maverick. Here at Best Car Reviews, I try to bring the most accurate and relevant information under 10 minutes. There's no misleading and no wasted time. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like the content that you watch, please like and subscribe so I can continue to grow the channel. Let's get started. The Ford Maverick, I'm sure we're all very familiar with it now. It is the compact truck that has somewhat taken over the streets. You're seeing a lot of them everywhere as they are now essentially what the mid-sized truck used to be definitely a segment for them to compete with as people just simply don't need a truck that's huge now and they still want to be able to get that smaller trunk function of functionality and this is really their only hope if they don't want to spend a lot of money so heading in 2024 if you're loving this line stay tuned because they were going to go through all the trims key details that matter most to you determine which will be the best bang for your buck all photos and information says video come direct from ford let's dive in Ford keeps it simple with the trims. You're getting three options for the Maverick in 2024, XL, XLT, and the Lariat. XL starts you off at a very surprisingly low 23,400. Working your way up to the Lariat, you jump a little over 10 grand, 34,855. So there should be a trim here that falls within your price range, hopefully that you love, and you can get a Maverick that you want. Engine options, the standard engine is the two liter four cylinder EcoBoost, 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, or you can get the hybrid option, 2.5 liter four cylinder and one electric motor, 191 horsepower, 155 pound feet of torque. So good to see that hybrid option there. Also good to see that uh, the gas one is still standard. You will have to spend close to two grand for that hybrid uh, heading into 2024. Transmission, Gas engine was pairs with an 8-speed auto. The hybrid will get a CVT. Drivetrain, front-wheel drive is standard. All-wheel drive is optional on the gas engine. And hybrid only gets you front-wheel drive. MPGs, not too shabby. 23 city, 30 highway for the front-wheel drive setup, but one less for the all-wheel drive. And the hybrid gets you pretty good gas mileage, uh, as you would expect. 42 city and 33 highway. All right, let's look at the pictures of this 2024 Maverick while I go through the main features. This is still a design that you've come to know, and although I still struggle to form an opinion on the design, I'm able to sometimes catch an angle that makes me see it in a better light. I'm not anti-compact truck by any means, I just don't think Ford nailed the design. In fact, I think Ford's whole lineup is struggling. But if you look at aspects individually, they aren't too bad. You get a full black grille on the XL, black with a gray bar on the XLT, and a black with silver bar on the, X, on the Lariat. Excuse me. Tremor will get you a unique grill and accents in Tremor Orange. We'll get to that a little later. A little later. LED headlights all around. XLT and Lariat are wiper activated, and those two trims also have an option for black housings. Lariat even adds an LED signature accent lighting feature. Just to put this in perspective, these trims for their price points, getting LEDs, is actually quite nice. I've now owned two vehicles far more expensive than any of these trims that have come with halogens. So definitely want to take a moment to appreciate and Ford. Thank you for LEDs for sub $40,000. Thank you. The Tremor pack package will not only add a rugged appearance upgrade to your XLT or Lariat, but will also give you some rugged capability upgrades as well. You get black chrome headlights and taillights, an off-road tuned suspension supported by meaty all-terrain tires and a front skid plate. Orange Tremor accents add an eye-catching element to elevate your exterior presence as well. A 4x4 off-road package is also available. Gets you front tow hooks, hill descent control, skid plates, all-terrain tires, and five drive modes. That package is available when you buy an XLT or Lariat with all-wheel drive. The black appearance package on those same two trims as well gets you blacked out features as you can expect. The grill, mirrors, wheels, lights, logos, decals are all blacked out. So if you're into that, uh, you can definitely get a cool Maverick that you will like there. The available flex bed storage system comes equipped equipped with up to 10 available tie downs, a 110 volt outlet and a multi position tailgate. XL gives you an incredibly basic wheel design. I think four designers literally went to the kitchen aisle at Walmart, found a plate with absolutely zero detail on it and said, yep, this is what we're going to throw on the XL. Thankfully, XLT and Lariat step it up in wheel design. Maverick will come standard with 1500 pounds of payload and 2000 pounds of towing capacity. If you get the gas engine with the tow package, your capacity increases to 4,000 pounds, which I think is respectable. However, it's direct competition. The Hyundai Santa Cruz is rated for 5,000 pounds. These Mavericks have a four and a half foot bed, which does sound incredibly small, but is a little bigger than you can picture in your head. The best bang for your buck in this lineup, in my opinion, will be the gas engine XLT. And I would strongly consider adding the Tremor package onto it, even if it's going to cost about an extra 3K. 
I'm a big fan of the off-roading look and theme as I own a Colorado ZR2 Bison. I'd love to have a more rugged Maverick. If that's not your cup of tea though, still opt for that XLT because you'll get numerous standard features on the inside over the base trim and get elevated exterior features as well. Looking at the inside now, a basic but functional design and layout in these Mavericks. These price points need to be remembered when rating this interior. Seems to get anything super desirable, you need a vehicle over 40 k However, I think Ford does offer some niceties for the prices. Crew cab is the only option for these trims. You get a nice roomy setup in your compact truck. XL and XLT get you cloth seats, XLs in black, XLT in navy with some gray accents. Lariat will upgrade you to Active X trim seats in desert brown, which do look pretty nice. All trims are front bucket seats and a three seat bench in the back. Heated seats and eight way power adjustment is available on the XLT and standard for you on the Lariat. All trims come with an eight inch infotainment touchscreen that is just kind of thrown onto the dash. I'm fine with the XL getting an eight inch screen, but the top two trims should be at least 10 in my opinion in Ford. Please just integrate this into the dash a bit better than it is now. Uh, you do get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Standard, optional Bang and Olufsen sound system, dual zone automatic climate control, ambient lighting becomes standard on the XLT. You get basic driver's assist, safety and technology features standard, but you can option plenty more for more money, of course. Overall, I'm not going to complain about anything on the interior side from touchscreen size. It's all what I'd expect and makes sense to me. If you want a significantly better interior, then you need to opt for a different vehicle altogether. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a truck and you don't want an HD Super Duty, you're going to the next size down, you're going to a full size, you don't want the work truck because it looks kind of basic, you want at least an LT, oh look, you're still spending 40 something thousand dollars, it's like, okay, I'll go down to a midsize. Once again, I don't want the work truck, I want at least one or two trims up, bam, I'm, I'm pushing 40K again. What do I do here? I need some functionality of a truck, so you go down to the the compact market now you're looking at the Maverick and really the only other competition is the Santa Cruz which the Santa Cruz has actually grown on me and I do think it's a better design than this Maverick and you know there's probably minimal things to compare between the two actually compare everything between the two but it is nice if you're looking for one of these that you only have two options that's a good thing and a bad thing good thing because there's not as much to get confused about when picking the what's best and also a bad thing because if you don't like either of them then you don't have another option We'll see if Toyota's going to come out with something soon. There's a lot of chat and renderings about a Toyota Stout coming to the U.S. We'll have to see about that. I think Toyota's missing out. I think really any brand's missing out that banks a truck to not try to compete here because I think this is going to be a very big market soon as truck prices have gone out of control. And a mid-sized truck is now the size of a full-size truck and so on and so on. But if you're in the market for one of these, I think... It could be a good option. Weigh them out, compare them, and see what you like. Hopefully this video will lay things down a clear way for you guys. Thank you for watching this best car review. Please subscribe if you're not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop it in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out and join if you'd like, and I'll catch you on the next best car review.